so many lures to choose from. How do you choose? There is literally tens of thousands of different lures in hundreds of different shapes and styles. But I'm gonna give you the quick breakdown so that you can choose the right lure for your next fishing situation. So let's keep it really simple to start with. Let's get this lure out. That's an X-Wrap. I'm gonna break this down so you know what we're talking about as I roll through it. First of all, you've got the body of the lure. Now this is the bit that will change a lot from lure style to style and brand to brand. This is the bib here. This is the toe point here, that little ring there. And that will vary from on the bib to the front of the lure here to even up on the head. You've got your parts here that the trebles or the single hooks go onto. You have lures that are through wide. You have lures that aren't through wide. If they're through wide, it means there's a wire that runs through the body of the lure here. And that's generally for lures that are made for bigger fish that tend to destroy lures. So your big blue water species, species like barramundi and cod in this country. So that is the breakdown of a lure. Now, let's go back a step. So how do you choose a lure? First of all, I'm not gonna worry about colors for this so much. At the moment, we're gonna talk about getting the right lure. Now, lures are made of two things, either plastic or timber. One of the oldest and most famous lures in the world is the good old Rapala. Okay, made by Laurie Rapala many, many, many years ago. This is still to this day, this is an original floating nine Rapala. This one is made of timber. The first one was made of timber and they're still made of timber. But with modern technology, we now have lures made of injected plastic. So stuff like this, our crankers, all those sorts of things. Majority of lures you'll find are plastic, but timber still has a very strong place in the market. Why? Timber has its own action. It swims differently to what a plastic lure does, just the natural buoyancy in the timber. It's obviously silent because it's timber, so it's got no rattles in it, things like that. And for my money, one of my favorite trout lures to this day is still just an original Rapala. It's a timber lure that makes no noise. So if we go from there, we've got timber, we've got plastic, what you'll notice here is we're also gonna start talking about body shape, all right? So I might ditch him for now, and we'll ditch that one for now. But if you notice here, this little cranker minnow, he's long and skinny. So this one looks a lot like a bait fish, but the shape of this lure is going to determine how this lure swims, not only how it swims, but how it casts and what it does. If we got that and then we grab something like this one here, little jackal chubby, okay? We've got two lures that you could use for pretty well the same species that are completely different in shape. So this one here, as I said, long and skinny, looks very much like a real fish, okay? As this one goes through the water, he's got a much tighter sort of wriggling shimmy sort of action. This little fat so here, this little chubby, as the name says, he's got this fat little body. I'm gonna pop him out of the packet so you can see it properly. All right, so we open that guy up. He's got that fat little body just like that versus this guy here, we'll rip him out. He's got the skinny body. All right, pop these out. You gotta be really careful getting some of these out of the packaging so that you don't end up with the hooks in yourself before you start fishing. Right, that shows us a little bit better. Ah, got me. All right, so we have two lures, long and skinny, short and fat. This one here, okay, or any lure that's sort of this style is gonna have that tighter wriggle that I mentioned. This one here with its fat body, and it doesn't matter if it's this big or, or this big, he's gonna have more of a head down, a real sort of body roll, like a real sort of shuffle like that. So it actually makes a lot more vibration through the water. You can fish this one slower because he's, he's sort of doing this a lot more, whereas this guy, he, he tends to have this really tight little just bait fish sort of shuffle. So they both have their place. And this is why you can't just have one lure when you go fishing. This one here also has a bigger bib. This one here has a smaller bib. So this one's going to run shallower. This guy's going to dive deeper, but he's also going to dive, as we said, with this fat body. He's going to be a little bit bum up as he swims, head down, body wriggle, real shuffle like that. As you can see, he's got a bit of a prawny color to him. All right, this one here's got a little bit of a bait fishy color, okay? 
But the next thing that comes to the great thing about lures these days is this. So when I find a lure that I like, I tend to have multiples of them because there is nothing worse than going fishing, finding that lure that works, catching a couple of fish with it, and then if you're like me, you cast into a snag and you lose it, okay? Or if you're unlucky, you get bitten off by a fish or you lose it on a fish, and that can wreck your day. So that's one side of it. So anything I find that I do like, I tend to then go and get more of them. A, you'll also have a lot of confidence when you fish that lure because you go, last time I fished, I caught fish with that and it was really good. So you'll tie it on and you'll cast it out and you'll be confident from the word go on catching another fish. But as I showed you with this lure, right, this little cranker minnow, he's a shallow runner. He's got that long body, but he's got that small bib. There's nothing worse or, or you know, than, than going, I love that lure, but I need a lure that dives a little bit deeper. So in many cases, and it's really easy to do for a lot of companies, they'll have the same lure, but in a deep diver, right? So if I ditch that and I'll grab that again, what you're very quickly gonna see, two lures, exactly the same, right? One with a small bib and now one with a bigger bib. This is automatically going to dive deeper. But what I'm going to also show you is the bib shapes. So as you can see, he's got that sort of pointy bib I'll grab that little jackal again. So we've got different bib shapes here. We've got that little tiny skinny one. So that's going to give us a shallow running, very sort of tight shuffle swim to it, like a real erratic little bait fish. This guy here, he's got the bigger bib. So he's going to actually dive deeper. But because the back edge of the bib here is skinny back towards the body of the lure, he's still going to have that tight shuffle. You'll be able to twitch that lure, let it pause, do all that stuff. This guy here, he's got that bigger, rounder sort of coin shape at the end of the bib he's got that fatter sort of wobble puts out a lot of vibration gets down there so three different sort of actions of lures but the main thing that i wanted to show you in this instance right now two lures same same right same size same everything different size bibs that allows you to cover different areas so if i was fishing over sand flats or in a river or something like that and this was perfect but then if i was on a sand flat and it was dropping off into two or three meters of water and I know that the fish might be sitting on that drop off as the tide runs out. This has been successful on the flats on the high tide. Now as we're dropping into the deeper water, I go to this guy, I can fish deeper water and still be fishing for the same fish that were on the flats earlier.